Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is zero one notes on one step equations. Your objective, you'll be able to use inverse operations to solve equations. These are our notes here. So, one thing you need to know when it comes to algebra is that we use lots of variables. Now, variables are just symbols. Symbols that you've actually even seen in this world already through media via TV and just all around. You already know of letters A, B, C and X, Y, Z. You've probably seen a Superman symbol or a Batman symbol or the Spider-Man symbol. These symbols can be used as variables too. It's just something to represent a symbol just to represent something. Now, we also have Greek letters here. That's what's all of these letters here in the corner. Greek letters also are symbols or variables that represent another thing. BQ or VI. Well, VI I know is velocity. And I think BQ is buoyancy. Which you can be learning about in science class. So variables, they pop up everywhere in science and I think all around this world. Variables, they're like a placeholder. It's just something to take the place of something that we don't know just yet. It's a place, something to just put in place for something that we don't already know. Something we're going to solve for. I like to think of of variables as a symbol and we just have to figure out what the symbol stands for. Obviously the most common symbol that we use in math is X. And that's why you see things like solve for X on t-shirts. This is a mathematical equation X equals 6. It says the variable X is equal to 6. Our goal the next couple of lessons is to isolate the variable to find out its value aka get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign like x equals 6, x m equals 7, and a equals 2. In order to find out the value of a variable we have to use inverse operations. Inverse operations is the opposite operation to what is given. For example, the following is a list of numbers here on the left hand side 10, 8, negative 2, 37, and negative 14. Do you know the opposite of these numbers, aka the numbers that have the same distance from 0? So from 0 to 10, you know that's a length of 10. So what's the opposite of positive 10? Well, that will be negative 10. The opposite of positive 8 is negative 8. So negative 10 is the inverse operation of 10. Negative 8 is the inverse operation of 8. The inverse operation of negative 2 is positive 2. The opposite operation of 37 is negative 37. And the opposite, or the inverse operation of negative 14 is positive 14. Alright, looking at number 8. One of the ways I use inverse operations in real life is when I'm driving a car. I could determine how many miles I could drive with the amount of gas left in my tank. For example, let's give you a real life situation here before we do the math. Mr. Brzezowski's Mustang has a tank size of 26 gallons of gasoline. He has to drive a total of 232.5 miles to get to his destination. If Mr. Brzezowski only has a quarter of a tank of gas, his car gets 35 miles per gallon with these conditions, will Mr. Brzezowski get to his destination without filling up his gas tank? Now, cars, to find out how many miles per gallon and or RPMs or miles per hour, these are all formulas where inverse operations are used. In this case, I'm doing miles per gallon. So miles per gallon is equal to miles the car is driven divided by the gallons of gas the car has. So first we got to know, we, we're told we have only a quarter of a tank left. 
and he has 26 gallons of gasoline is the tank size. So one quarter of 26, we gotta do that math real quick first. One fourth times 26 is 6.5 gallons of gas that's currently in his tank. So he has 6.5 gallons. So we're gonna put that 6.5 in the denominator because that's how many gallons of gas the car has, 6.5. We know our car goes 35 miles per gallon, so we put 35 next to the equal sign. So 35 equals miles of the car can be driven divided by 6.5. We have ourselves an equation here where we're going to solve or get the miles a car can be driven all by itself. So how do we get this divide by 6.5 to the other side? Well, we do the inverse operation. The opposite of division is multiplication. Just like the opposite of addition is subtraction, and subtraction is division. And the inverse operation of multiplication is division. Sorry, so plus and minus. So addition and subtraction are opposites of one another, and multiplication and division are opposites of one another. So the opposite of divide by 6.5 is multiply by 6.5 to both sides. So 6.5 times 35, so we multiply those two together. And when we do that, we're going to get 227.5 miles that can be driven. That 227.5 miles is less than 232.5. Since it's less than, that means he doesn't have enough gas in the car to make it to his destination that's 232.5 miles away. So he's going to have to fill up the tank of gas before arriving to his destination. It's just something how math could be used. And something that you could be doing every single day because eventually when you guys get older you could drive some cars. So, what we're going to be mostly seeing here in math and how this is broken down. We have x plus 7 is equal to 15. Our goal is to get the x all by itself. To do this we have to move that positive 7 to the other side of the equal sign. So the opposite of positive seven is minus seven. So if we, let's do this in blue. If we subtract seven from the left side, right underneath that positive seven, that's the inverse operation. They cancel each other out, so it disappears. Now, if we subtract seven from one side of the equal sign, we have to do it to the other side. 15 and seven, they're both integers, so I can subtract them, so 15 minus seven is going to get us 8. So x equals 8. Okay. So what I did, just so it's nice and pretty, slide a little bit more there. Cool. So I subtracted something from both sides of the equation, and then I got my solution. Let's do another one together. So here's example 2 x plus 14 equals 27. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides because the inverse operation of positive 14 is minus 14. They cancel out. If I subtract 14 from one side equal sign, I got to do it to the other side. So we have x equals 27 minus 14 is going to get us 13. So x equals 13. There's our work typed up nice and pretty. Here's example three. We have x minus 24 equals 38. Now the opposite of minus 24 is plus 24. So we add 24 to both sides. And we get x equals 62. So I add 24 both sides and we get x equals 62. I added 24 from both sides of the equation. And that's how I got my solution. Let's look at another one. We have x minus 18 equals 78. 
So we add 18 to both sides. And we're going to get x equals, well, 78 plus 18 gets you 80, 96. That's what I did there. Given, which is our top equation that's given to us. I added 18 for both sides of the equation, and then that's how I got my solution of x equals 96. So we have 3x equals 15. This is 3 times x. There's a little time sign in between. It's an imaginary thing. It's just something you just have to know. So when you have a number right next to a variable, there's a little time sign in between them. To tear apart that 3 from the x, the opposite of times is divide by. So we're going to divide by 3 to both sides, and we're going to get x equals 15 divided by 3 is 5. It was work nice and pretty. Example number five. We have 7x equals 56. So we're going to divide both sides by 7. The reason why we use division because that's a multiplication in between the 7 and the x. The times 7 and the divide by 7 cancel out. So 56 divided by 7 gets us 8. In this one, we have 12x equals 156. So we divide by 12 to both sides. And we get x equals, well, 156 divided by 12. I believe that's 13. So that's how we get 13. Number seven. We have x divided by 3. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So we got to multiply both sides by 3. So the times 3 and the divide by 3 cancel out. So we have x equals 14 times 3. Now 14 times 3, that's 42. Number eight, we have m divided by five. Our goal is to get m by itself. So the opposite of divide by five is times five. The times five and a divide by five cancel out and you get m equals 17 times five. Well, that's 85. Number nine, we practice so many different variables and we practice with X. Well, the, the symbol of a Batman symbol, it's the same story. We want to try to get that Batman symbol all by itself. So what's the opposite of divide by nine? Well, you know, that's times nine. So we're gonna multiply by nine on both sides. So our Batman symbol, it's not, mine is not as good. Batman symbol is equal to 90. So I multiply by 9 on both sides. Alright, now that we practice a couple of those, let's look at one more car problem here. Let's try this one again. Except now it's with different numbers. There we go. Now it fits on your screen. Mr. Brzezowski's Mustang has a tank size of 35 gallons of gasoline. He has to drive a total of 231.25 miles to get to his destination. If Mr. Brzezowski has a quarter tank of gas, his car gets 27 miles per gallon. Will Mr. Brzezowski get to his destination without filling up his tank? So, we know a quarter of a, ta quarter of a tank with a tank size of 35 gallons. So 35 divided by four, we put that in our calculator. 
35 divided by 4. He currently has 8.75 gallons of gas in his current tank. So 8.75 goes in the denominator of our fraction. And that's according to this formula that we have down here. Miles per gallon is equal to miles the car is driven divided by the gallons of gas the car has. Whoop. Ah, whatever. We'll leave him there. We know miles per gallon. Well, the miles per gallon, we're told that it's 27. There we go, 27. So 27 miles per gallon is equal to the miles the car is going to be driven divided by 8.75. So we're trying to find out how far can our car go. So we want to know how many miles a car is going to be able to be driven with that amount of gas. So you have x divided by 8.75 is equal to 27. As you probably could guess, you multiply by 8.75 the both sides of the equation. These cancel out, so we have x all by itself. So 27 times 8.75 that will get you a total of 236.25. So 236.25. Now, that's how many miles this car could be driven without filling up a tank. Is this amount more than his destination? You bet. It's about five miles per hour, five miles more than he needs so he doesn't have to fill up the tank of gas to get to his destination he could go straight to it without filling up here's classwork and homework if you have any questions feel free to email me or come next up i'll be happy to help you out all right have yourself a good night